just to get ourselves started, we're looking at creating a DAG between the two servers that are currently in Los Angeles. So in our scenario, you recall that we have the c2cbullet.com domain, and within that domain, on the Los Angeles side, we have a server that's called laex 2 k 10 CASHUB1. And we also have two mailbox servers, LAEX2K10MB1 and LAEX2K10MB2. So what we're going to do, just to get our feet wet here with creating our first DAG, is we're going to establish a DAG between the two mailbox servers in Los Angeles. And they both have production databases already in play. There's LAEX2K10MB1 database and LAEX2K10MB2 database. These were created when we set up the servers, and we simply just changed the names in order to match the server names. It makes it easier so that you know which database you're playing with. In this case, all of our mailboxes are actually on LAEX2K10MB1. So the second database is not really a production database. So all we're going to do in this case is form the DAG, add the two mailbox servers to the DAG, and then create a replica of the LAEX2K10MB1 production database. That replica will go on the second server. All right, so let's jump over to our Exchange environment and let's get this started. All right, so we're actually on the LAEX2K10 CAS Hub 1 server. And sometimes when you get lost as far as what server you're working on, it's good to make sure. So we can check here LAEX2K10 CAS Hub 1, which is part of the c2cbullet.com domain. And we're actually looking at some of the setup for this, just so it's clear how we have things worked out. You'll note that we have two different sites and two different subnets. So the LA subnet is the 10 network, the 10.x.x.x, and the New York subnet is the 192.168.1.x. And so they're both set up. We have domain controllers in each one, LADC1 and NYDC1. Obviously, in a real production environment, you're going to want multiple domain controllers for redundancy. We're actually talking about high availability, we're talking about redundancy and resiliency, and it would be sort of silly in a production environment if you didn't have that for your Active Directory. Remember, Exchange works off of Active Directory, so if you don't have redundancy when it comes to domain controllers, DNS, global catalogs, things of that sort, well, your Exchange isn't going to work too well either. So keep that in mind. In our case, being that this is a lab setup, we'll stick with the single domain controllers, especially because with our Hyper-V servers, we only have so much room on the Hyper-V servers for multiple systems, and so we're trying to make the most use of our servers by putting more Exchange servers on them. Now as for the Exchange servers, if we look here we can see that we have two CAS Hub servers, so we have one in LA and we have one in New York at this point. We'll be discussing high availability for non-mailbox server roles in a future lesson, but these are each in their separate sites and on separate servers. And then if we go to our mailbox for server configuration, you can see that we have four different mailbox servers. We have two in LA, MB1 and MB2, and we have two in New York, MB1 and MB2. And each of these has a single database on them. You can see the database copy down here. Currently there are no replicas. All of the copy statuses say that they're mounted, but none of them are currently in a database availability group. So you don't actually create that under server configuration. You go up to organization configuration and click mailbox there. Here you can see the different databases again. And then we choose database availability groups. So at this point, we're going to use the wizard to create a new database availability group. We click new database availability group. The wizard comes up. We have to provide a name. Remember, it can be 15 characters. We'll call it LA DAG1. And at this point, we have to provide a witness server and a witness directory. If we don't do this, one will be chosen for us. So in our case, being that the DAG is going to be in LA, we're going to use the CAS Hub server as our witness server. So we select the checkbox. So we'll put in the LA 
EX2K10 CAS Hub 1. And the domain is C2C Bullet for the fully qualified domain name. As for the witness directory, we can indicate the path to the directory that we want created on the witness server. However, it will create one by default. So we'll leave this blank and let it just create the default path. We click New. And it's as simple as that. And again, you can see here that the new dash database availability group commandlet was used. It indicated the name and the witness server itself, but did not indicate the IP address. So one will be provided through DHCP. We click Finish. And you can see that the witness directory is here. It's under C backslash DAG file share witnesses backslash ladag1.c2cbullet.com. Okay, so we have our witness server here. Currently, there are no member servers in this DAG. So if we right click and we click Manage Database Availability Group Membership, we click Add, and we're going to choose the two LA servers. And we say OK. And then we click Manage. All right, and both servers were added in. Doesn't look like we have any problems. And you can see the commandlets there as well for adding in additional members to the database availability group. We click Finish. And now you can see we have our member servers listed out here. We also now have the DAG network set up. We can expand this out. And this is all part of the clustering aspects that have been added in. Again, keep in mind, we did not set up clustering. We simply set up the database availability group and added members. And so behind the scenes, the clustering aspects were added in. We can see the subnets. In this case, we have the single 10 subnet. It's up. We see the network interfaces. We can see that they're up. So we're pretty pleased to see that everything is up and running. There certainly is some configuration we can do here. We can go into the properties of the DAG network and we can look at the subnet itself. Enable replication is checked. We can play around with this and look at all of the different properties and see how this is working. Keep in mind too that if we want, we can go back and we can add additional members to this database availability group. So this is not a one-time situation where you only have one chance to pick your servers. As you add servers to the mix and you want to add them into the database availability group, you can do that. But again, we don't have replicas of our databases just yet. Let's go back to database management. And you recall that we have this LAEX2K10MB1 database. And you can see here that we have only a single database copy on our LAEX2K10MB1 server. And it's mounted. And we see it's the activation preference of one. All right, so if we right click the database itself, you'll note this option, Add Mailbox Database Copy. This won't be here if we did not set up the database availability group and put the servers in there. In fact, if we click, let's say, the New York one, you'll notice we don't have that option. But for this database, it's there. Now, if you don't see it there initially, just right click in here and click Refresh. That may be the problem. As long as the servers were added to the database availability group, it shouldn't be a problem, but you might just need to refresh. We right click, we choose Add Mailbox Database Copy, and we need to choose the server that we're going to make the copy on. Currently, we only have one copy on our LAEX2K10MB1 server. We click Browse, and you can see that we only have one other server that we can create a copy on. Now, this dispels the thought that perhaps we could also choose our own server and create a copy of the database to perhaps another disk on the same server. That reminds us of LCR, Local Continuous Replication, and that's what we had with Exchange 2007. That's not the case here. If you do want a copy of that data, if you want a replica, you're going to need to put it on a separate server. So we don't do disk to disk within the same server in Exchange 2010, even with a database availability group. So we only have one other server to choose from. There it is, our LAEX2K10 MB2 server. We say OK and we click Add. And there we go. And again, you can see the PowerShell command for that. 
we click finish and now we can see that we have the first copy here that's the active live master copy and then we have the secondary copy on our second server the mailbox server mb2 it's healthy according to the copy status and the activation preference is 2 now that comes in handy when you start adding additional servers to the mix because if we had another server in let's say New York that we add to the database availability group we wouldn't want that one to have the activation preference of 2 and this local server to have the activation preference of 3 because then it will actually go in that order if the first server goes down the one in New York would pick up the slack and would become the active and here you have one local that should be the active if the first one goes down so you need to keep track of those activation preference numbers and make sure that the servers are in the proper order of how you would want them to respond if one went down and the next one had to become the active. And that's our basic DAG configuration. Now there's a little bit more that we can do here, more that we can talk about, and we will in a future lesson. Let's stop at this point because what we've accomplished here in this lesson is going over the prerequisites, setting up a database availability group, putting two of our members into it, and then creating a replica of the data. So at this point, let's return to the slides, let's discuss a few supporting resources that I like, and then we'll close out the lesson with a review.